Hi, I'm Lisa Bedford, the Survival Mom, and today let's talk about bartering, specifically bartering versus currency. I want to clear up some misconceptions there are out there in the survival world and in survival forums when it comes to barter and when it comes to the usefulness of having currency or cash on hand. First of all, bartering is a popular concept in the survival and prepper um, realms because it, I think it kind of just feeds into what we're already doing and that is storing up different goods and supplies for the future. And so a lot of times we think, well, if I'm already buying dental floss, if I'm already buying some uh, band-aids or soap, I might as well buy extra for barter. And you can just Google top items for barter um, online and you'll come up with just dozens and dozens and dozens of suggestions. So. I am not at all against bartering. In fact, sometimes as small business owners, we do that with other small business owners where, you know, maybe I will uh, help someone in some way using my skills in return for whatever skills they have to offer. But I think that there are so many drawbacks when it comes to counting on bartering in the future. I mean, in a collapse, post-collapse world, that we need to really be smart and think ahead on this side of such a scenario. Uh, common knowledge. Uh, if you go to those websites, the common knowledge out there in the survival circles say, well, stock up on things like uh, dental supplies, all right, toothpaste, things like that, um, batteries. Okay, Costco usually has pretty good prices on batteries. Uh, something like coffee is another popular item that you must have on hand for barter. And then of course the ever popular booze. All right, whatever it is you want, decide you want to stock up on, you know, this is usually on every top items for barter lists. However, it's, it does sound good. It sounds good to think that, oh, I'm just going to buy a whole bunch of liquor when I see it on sale at the grocery store, and I'm going to put it aside. I'm going to buy a bunch of those little airline-sized bottles of, you know, alcohol, and I'll have those, and I'll have buckets of them, and, you know, I will, you know, reign and rule in a post-collapse world, me and my liquor, okay? However, you need to think about something, a real-life scenario. And I thought I had a bottle of ibuprofen, but I don't. All right, my prop girl uh, is off today. So uh, if I had a bottle of ibuprofen, which by the way, a really good place to stock up on, on ibuprofen is Costco. They come two packages, you know, two bottles packaged together and probably for $30, $40, you could buy enough ibuprofen to last you probably for a year. But anyway, let's say I have a bottle of ibuprofen and you really are in dire need of some kind of mild pain reliever like ibuprofen. And so you come to me and say, well, Lisa, you know, you're thinking I've been stocking up on all these top items for barter. Um, would you take, you know, four tubes of toothpaste for one of your bottles of ibuprofen? Well, now, I have a certain number of things going on in my head at that moment. First of all, do I have enough ibuprofen to last my family for a lengthy period of time until such a time as it becomes easy to acquire? All right. If store shelves are empty and if a lot of factories have shut down, I am probably not going to be interested in your four tubes of toothpaste because, hey, I bought them when they were on sale on double coupon day myself. OK, and in addition, it's not too difficult to make homemade toothpaste. So I'm going to say no to your toothpaste. So then you go back to your drawing board and you bring out some coffee. Well, here I have however many pounds of coffee this is. And would you trade um, this jar or this container of coffee for a bottle of ibuprofen? And I would say, no, I don't drink coffee. Now, if you can produce uh, a weekly caramel frappuccino from Starbucks, that might be a different story, but not just a, th a whole thing of coffee. Just not interested. So the trick really is to, with bartering, is to find someone who really wants or needs what you have and you in turn have something that they really want or need. Are you getting a picture of how tricky this might be? Also, if something is important enough to be on that list of must-haves for bartering, okay, everything from batteries to coffee to duct tape to prescription drugs, I like the idea of stocking up on prescription drugs. 
I mean, if it was that easy to stock up on extra prescription drugs, then nobody would be wondering what they're going to do in a post-collapse scenario with their various medical conditions and how they're going to get their prescription you know, filled and refilled during a time like that. So I think that's kind of a um, not very realistic inclusion on those lists. But um, whatever is on those lists, if it's important enough to be included on that list, then think about this. Why would I want to part with it? If I have stocked up on 25 packages of D-cell batteries, okay, and I'm thinking, I don't know when or where I'm going to have access to D-cell batteries, even if you have something that I want, maybe kind of need, I'm really going to think hard before I part with those D-cell batteries. Again, if it's important enough to be on one of those lists of must-have items for barter, then maybe it's something you won't want to part with. Just think about that. Um, something else, you're also going to have to find someone who not only wants or really needs what you have to offer, but what about location? Maybe the person who is just dying for this, and maybe they would give you three or four buckets of mountain house entrees, or maybe they would give you, you know, a mountain of batteries or, you know, Percocets or whatever they have. They just want to have this. Then what if they live two towns over? Or what if maybe they live in your general area, but you don't know? See, location is key because you may very well have something that someone wants and is in dire need of. But if you can't find that person, if there's no system for locating that person, putting the two of you together, then they won't get their Jim Beam and you won't get your buckets of mountain house entrees. Another um, drawback to bartering is timing. You know, maybe right now I don't need D-cell batteries, but maybe six months from now, we might be down to our last package and then it might be a whole other story. But then by that time, you will probably have gotten your bottle of ibuprofen and you don't need the batteries anymore. Do you see how crazy this is? A lot of times survival forms and discussions there on different survival websites and blogs, they make it sound as though this is going to be just a very simple matter of you stockpiling certain items and then for sure that is going to be your ticket to wealth and security in a post-collapse world. I just want to point out that that is not a very realistic expectation. And in fact, you may find yourself sitting high and dry with your buckets of duct tape or paracord or uh, aspirin or cosmetics thinking that those were going to really get you what you need and you find out otherwise. Another drawback is in the quantity. So let's say that you need um, some first aid supplies. And I have, you know, maybe a, a box or two of band-aids that I'm willing to part with, but you actually need a lot more. And so I just don't have what you need. I don't have the amount that you need or the amount that you're looking for. If you're in some kind of a construction project and you need X number of feet of wire, for example, well, I may not be able to help you. I may be able to have a little bit or a portion, but not everything you need for your job. So I think that there are enough drawbacks to planning for a barter society to really think hard before you start focusing on stocking up on anything for bartering. And of course, anything you do buy specifically for barter, make sure there are also things that you would want and need and use, okay? If you don't drink yourself, and if you have absolutely no use for alcohol of any kind, then maybe stocking up on vodka or gin or wine isn't, you know, the smartest thing to do in case you're ever stuck with it. I, I don't know, just a, a suggestion there. So here's what I think that is going to be barterable in the future, and it's barterable right now. And that is skills, knowledge, and physical strength. Think about that, for example. I may not need batteries, I may not need coffee, I may not need paracord. But you know, if my husband has a fused back, you know, as he actually does, then maybe we could exchange something for your services as a massage therapist or physical therapist. If my husband is a carpenter, and your house has suffered storm damage, then maybe we can work out something where he does some carpentry work for you and some repair work on your home in exchange for something you have to offer that we would want or need. I really think it's the skill set. I think it's the um, bank of knowledge 
that is going to be most useful as a bartering currency. Physical strength. Think about all the people who might own gardens or who might own land. Think about people who, you know, they just don't have the physical strength themselves to take care of their home. And, you know, some young buck comes along and he's 21 years old and, you know, as dumb as a box of rocks, okay? Not all 21 year olds are, but let's just say, but he can really help out in the gardening process. He can help take care of farm animals. And that would definitely earn someone like that maybe their keep. And maybe they can just plan on meals or shelter or whatever uh, front with you and on your homestead or in your bunker or wherever you happen to be. So I think if there was anything that I would want to stock up on, it would be attaining additional skills. One skill I've been thinking of adding, I can already sew, I'm actually a pretty good seamstress, but I don't know how to uh, just take fabric and I'm not re really good at fitting it, you know, for, as, as in alterations. And there's an alteration store near me and I've actually thought of going and asking if I could just sit and watch and just watch the, you know, the different seamstresses there do the alterations and the hemming because in the future, brand new fancy clothes may be very difficult to come by. We may be wearing hand-me-downs, we may be trading clothes from family to family and finding that a lot of things just don't fit. And so just something is knowing how to do alterations uh, might be a very barterable skill. So that brings us to currency. Now, I have been, I have gotten some uh, emails calling me the crazy lady because I recommend having cash on hand, whatever it is. I really, truly believe it's important. Now, usually the comeback to me is, well, the dollar is not going to be worth very much. The dollar is going downhill. You know, we all need just, you know, to amass stuff. Well, you know what? A lot of times there's only so much space we have for our stuff. Right now in Cyprus, with people there losing a good percentage of uh, their savings, all right? Well, I would rather start off with $50,000 cash and wake up in the morning to a devalued dollar or wake up to find that my government has taken away 30 or 40 percent of that than to have 50 bucks. I mean, that's just, to me, that's just common sense, okay? I would rather have this much and find out that it is going to, you know, I have less money, less cash than I thought I did, than have almost nothing. Because cash, here is the, here is the thing. This, I can exchange for anything. I can use this to buy this. I can use this to buy the coffee. I can use this to buy the ibuprofen. I can use this to buy ammo. I can use, th be, use this to buy prescriptions. That is why in culture after culture, society after society, they have always gone to some form of common currency. This way, it doesn't matter whether or not you need the batteries. If, I have, if you have this and I have the ibuprofen, we'll exchange. Because then I can use this to go buy a replacement for my ibuprofen. I can go buy replacement for my batteries, whatever. That is why a currency, a common currency, is so important. And it is not crazy to set some of that currency, that cash, aside. Even in post-collapse Argentina, whatever their currency was, it ended up having some value. Some value is better than no value at all. So I would recommend stocking up on some of these things for barter, but just make sure you also are going to use them for, every, you know, if you're stuck with, you know, a few cases of Jim Beam. Okay, I know some of you would probably, you know, think you had gone to Prepper Heaven in that case. Um, stock up on skills and knowledge and become acquainted with other people, with other skills and knowledge. It is so handy to find out that, you know, Mary down the street teaches music lessons, but she could really use some help with editing a book that she's working on. I can do the editing, she can provide the music lessons for my kids. So those kinds of exchanges have always gone on, and they will continue to, con continue to do so and become even more important and life-saving. But I also recommend currency. Okay, you may not want to have $20,000 or $5,000 in currency set aside, you know, in hiding places in your home. But please, don't think that the world is going to be your oyster if you have a whole bunch of stuff to barter. It may or may not. The people who are stocking up on ammo thinking they're going to uh, exchange that, 
I am not so sure that I would want to put ammunition in the hands of someone who could then turn around and take everything I have because now they have this ammunition and they can just shoot me and my family. Okay, I never thought that was that great of an idea. So barter versus currency. Currency, I believe, will always have its place even in a post-collapse world. In a post-collapse world, something will emerge as a currency. It may be junk silver. It may be um, little links uh, on gold chains or gold jewelry. Okay, Fernanda Aguirre, that, uh, who blogs over on um, uh, survivingargentina.com, he talks about people in the marketplace using just gold wedding rings and links of gold chain for their exchanges. And that has happened in Zimbabwe as well. So something will emerge as a currency, but I guarantee you, it's not going to be this. It's not going to be duct tape. We aren't going to go to a duct tape and paracord currency, so you can forget that. That's what I have to say about barter and currency today. Um, please visit my blog, thesurvivalmom.com, for more wisdom from yours truly. Um, also, catch up with me on Twitter, Facebook. I try to stay up to date with Pinterest, but honestly, um, I just my time is limited. Also, look for the Survival Mom Radio Hour podcast and the Survival Mom Radio Network, which hosts a dozen or more fabulous women hosts who will be discussing everything from living on a shoestring to canning and preserving food to just learning how to live as a brand new homesteader. I think you will really like our podcast network. I will see you the next time around.